Trick or treat, everyone! If you're looking to create Halloween treats on a budget, there's so many finds at Dollar Tree to make your own boo baskets with four DIY spooky treat ideas using many supplies from your local Dollar Tree store. Take a look around and browse because there's things you might not expect to find for your baking and treat making needs. Today, we will be creating marshmallow pops, pretzel rods, cake pops, and Rice Krispie treats, making the perfect spooky assortment to fill our baskets. So come along with me for our spooky shopping trip to create something magical. Let's head over to a local Dollar Tree and find everything we need for our boo baskets. First, you'll want to browse the seasonal section for this one Halloween item, which is a Halloween treat basket of your choice. These monster baskets were a great value with glittery accents, or if you want a different style, the cylinder treat buckets were adorable as well. The only type that I don't recommend for this project are any of the larger and taller buckets since you would need to stuff them with more filler, so keep that in mind. But later on we'll need some filler to secure all the treats in the basket. The green blocks of floral foam can be found in the craft aisle, and the shredded crinkle paper is located in the party section. Next, it's time to grab the four items that are used to prepare our treats. First on the list are the Jet Puff regular sized marshmallows to create these fun and easy marshmallow pops in the vampire, bat, and mummy designs. To start melting your chocolate, I suggest Sweet Tooth Fairy brand from Michael's Craft Store and add a thinning agent to make the coating on your treats super smooth, either Paramount Crystals or Easy Thins from Joanne. It's key to add them both in together before melting to prevent the consistency from being clumpy. And feel free to melt the chocolate in a microwave, you don't need a melting pot or anything, this is just for fun. Sweet Tooth Fairy came out with the cutest cauldron melting pot with witch's fingers dipping forks that I just had to show you guys. It's 20% off at Michael's Craft Store if you like to brew up some chocolatey treats. When achieving a vibrant color like the bat, gradually mix in oil-based food coloring and insert some colorful paper straws into your marshmallows. You can choose to dip the straw into a little chocolate like you would to attach a cake pop or skip it all together since the marshmallow is sticky enough on its own. All I'm doing is dipping until the marshmallow is coated and tap, tap, tap gently while it's still turned upside down, then flip it upright. My favorite way to prevent a flat bottom is by standing upright to dry in floral foam without setting it down so that the bat design looks spooktacular in the basket. For this flying bat, place some sugar eyes on the front with a dot of melted chocolate as your glue and pipe a smile with stiff consistency red chocolate followed by a pair of fangs by dragging the white chocolate into a small teardrop shape. For his wings, finish by cutting an Oreo in half and removing the cream, then securing each corner with a generous amount of melted chocolate, making sure to hold that in place for about 10 seconds and our friend Bentley the Bat is ready to fly out of this haunted house. Another cute and classic design are the Mummy Marshmallow Pops. Stack two marshmallows onto the straw and dip right into the white melted chocolate. For this, I use the super white color to eliminate any ivory tones that are seen in the original white. Instead of a regular drizzle up and down, I drizzle on a diagonal, switching sides and alternating to wrap him up in his bandages. And to switch it up, I love these green sugar eyes to make his mummy eyes glow with his costume. I forgot to mention that I spotted some paper straws at Dollar Tree in the party section. However, I didn't find these exact colors. I will be sure to link mine down in the description box below. To style Mr. Vampire's hair, I'm brushing edible adhesive on a purple marshmallow in a V-shaped arch for his hairline, as well as filling in the top and all around the edges exactly where I want his hair to cover. 
then sprinkling on black sanding sugar to give his hair a shiny look. This method allows you to be precise and take your time. Apply the sugar eyes, red smile, and fangs just as we did for the bat and add to his mischievous expression with edible marker to draw eyebrows. Last, to dress him up, I have a mini cupcake liner that I poked a small hole through the bottom and a V-shaped cutout in the front to create his fashionable collar so Mr. Vampire looks fantastic. The second treat item you'll need from Dollar Tree are pretzel rods. They are straight without any bends to make fabulous dipped pretzels. The candy corn design is so unique and uses the three color ombre method. For the technique, I have my white, orange, and yellow chocolate melted. I'm placing a little puddle of each color onto the parchment paper. A good estimation is about two teaspoons of each. Once you have the puddles, line up the pretzel rod to include all the stripes and roll the pretzel through until it's completely covered. My tip for the ombre method is to work as quickly as possible when you roll and dip to prevent the chocolate from drying up. The fun part is matching the striped pattern on the pretzel with the coordinating colors of sanding sugar. Dollar Tree actually had some really nice coarse sanding sugar available. Coarse grain sanding sugar pops the most and has the most sparkle. Once the pretzels have set, I'm drizzling the white chocolate on with a piping bag using back and forth motions. And while the chocolate is wet, sprinkle on the sanding sugar to match the color of each section. Make sure you have plenty of green chocolate for Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein. My absolute favorite sprinkles for Frankenstein's hair were these fine chocolate jimmies from my local cake supply store that actually taste very chocolatey and are more delicate than the thicker ones. Again, I'm brushing on the edible adhesive on a quarter inch section to stick on his hair topped with spoonfuls of the chocolate jimmies. These fine jimmies are the perfect way to add texture without being too bulky. To bring Mr. Frankenstein to life, add googly eyes, a squiggly zigzag mouth with edible marker, and a scar with one diagonal line and two short lines right over it. Now all that's missing is the bread of Frankenstein. I dip the end of the green pretzel about one inch up in black chocolate and applied smaller sugar eyes instead of the larger size to make extra room for her eyeliner. I gave her a winged eyeliner look with a full set of lashes by drawing with the edible marker. The perfect accent for her lips are red heart sprinkles and why not give her a dazzling necklace with sugar pearls. A sprinkle grabber is the most helpful tool for individually placing the pearls with ease. Finish off her makeup with a touch of Wilton Edible Glitter Spray. I spray a generous amount by her hair with less as I go down. We can't forget about her iconic hairstyle. I piped curly zigzags with white chocolate from her hairline to the crown of her head. Now the Bride of Frankenstein is ready to party. Another simple pretzel idea is to dip the pretzel rod in super white chocolate and drizzle on the mummy wraps, just as we did for the mummy marshmallow pops, complete with green or yellow sugar eyes to stand out against the white. The third must-have item to purchase at Dollar Tree is their Pillsbury cake mix to make your cake pops if you have seen my cake pop dough tutorial, I recommend Pillsbury brand for the most smooth and firm dough to roll a perfect ball or other shapes. The base recipe can be switched out with any Pillsbury flavored mix. For this video, I'm using devil's food. It's super moist and delicious. It's key not to overbake your cake because you want to avoid drying it out and I do not use any frosting in my dough. The idea is to yield the maximum moisture from the cake without having to add frosting. This is accomplished with the process of sweating your cake immediately after baking. 
If you need additional help with that, I break down the recipe and entire process step by step in my cake pop tutorial. So make sure to give that a watch. After sweating the cake, it's time to prepare the dough. You'll notice how moist the cake is when slicing it up. The sweating process really is something you should never skip. I slice my cake into cubes and throw it in the stand mixer without any buttercream so it doesn't fall off the stick. I also use butter instead of oil in my recipe because oil is more likely to cause leakage in your cake pop dough. Begin mixing the cake in your stand mixer with a paddle attachment. It will come together effortlessly with the help of sweating the cake in combination with the right recipe. You'll know it's ready when the mixer thumps up and down, similar to kneading a dough. When you break a piece off, the cake should pack together smoothly without any crumbs. That's your go ahead to roll into shapes. Today I'm showing you how to make ghost and pumpkin shaped cake pops. I purchased both the popsicle mold for the ghost and the pumpkin mold from My Little Cake Pop. This meatball scoop is my go-to for knowing how much dough I need either for a round ball or any other shapes. Squeeze the clamp and remove all the scraps from off the scoop and press to mash the dough into a compact patty. This trick removes any cracks for a smooth shape. Then gradually ease the pressure as you cup it in your hands. It doesn't need to be perfectly round to go into the mold. It's most important to proceed without any cracks. Press the mold to squeeze as much dough out as you can and gently roll the excess through the opening of the pumpkin mold. This part is going to be the bottom of the pumpkin cake pop. Last, finish by opening the hinge and carefully remove. This is the cutest pumpkin in the patch. The ghost is a little larger and requires more dough, so I take two balls of dough instead of one and mash them together, then roll into a log. Since the ghost mold is a longer shape, the log method works best to fill out the mold. It's always better to have more dough to squeeze, so feel free to do this for any shape, including the pumpkin, if that's easier for you. Once you're done squeezing, slice the bottom with a knife for a clean edge and press to smooth it out. The finishing touches are to take the handle of a brush to gently press and roll to make a scalloped edge. I do this in two spots to achieve the look. If you haven't made shapes before, be adventurous and experiment with it. With a smooth, firm dough that rolls like a dream, you can create any fun shape. The next important step is inserting your lollipop sticks. Slowly twist it through after dipping into a small amount of chocolate without cracking your shapes. Our ghost needs some arms to hold his trick-or-treat basket. The Good and Plenty licorice candies from Dollar Tree are easy to stick on and look seamless once the cake pop is dipped. Cut a small amount to flatten the end and apply melted chocolate. It helps if it's slightly thicker to firmly anchor on the cake pop. Hold each candy on an angle for about 10 seconds before letting go. Then give Boo a dip into super white chocolate. I recommend a wider dipping container so the arms don't bump into the sides. After the chocolate has set, I was inspired by the face design for the ghost peeps to pipe tiny ovals for the eyes and mouth. Then I used an orange sixlet for the pumpkin pail and drew a jack-o'-lantern face with edible marker. When Jack is ready, stick him directly below the arm and finish by connecting with a thin line around the arm for the floating trick-or-treat pail. Boo requested edible glitter spray to sparkle onto the moonlight for when he goes trick-or-treating. And he looks bootyful. For the pumpkin cake pops, dip the lollipop stick into orange chocolate to match the color and insert the sticks. To see the true molding of the rind on the pumpkin, make sure your chocolate is thinned out enough to a loose consistency without being too thick. Just feel free to dip two or three times so it's opaque and you don't see any of the chocolate cake through the orange chocolate. Small pretzel sticks make the most clean and simple stem. Cut up the pretzel sticks and attach to the top of the pumpkin with a dot of melted chocolate. 
The fourth treat item to grab from the Dollar Tree shelves are Rice Krispie treats. We're putting them in the basket on sticks to make these jack o' lantern and cat Rice Krispie treat pops. Keep in mind that the pre made Rice Krispie treats are not as tightly packed as homemade, so they are more likely to lose shape or break. For that reason, always be careful when cutting them, handling, and inserting the sticks. If you plan on inserting the paper straws instead of plain lollipop sticks, I suggest to make a big enough hole with a pointy end, for example, a wooden candy apple stick, so that the paper straw is able to fit without forcing it through. Then swirl into a generous amount of chocolate as a durable seal so that the stick grips the crispy treat tightly. Coco the cat wants to help us dip the Rice Krispie treats. Her method is to dip into a shallow dipping container, working in circular motions, and come up after a few seconds, letting the excess drip, then shake as you hold the Rice Krispie treat right side up. There shouldn't be any missing patches of chocolate, otherwise it needs to be coated more, and it's time for the decorating. My favorite is this great value brand Cat Cupcake Kit from Walmart. It has ears, eyes, and a nose. The only thing I don't use in the kit are the licorice whiskers since they're usually bent in the package. So I pipe a set of three whiskers on each side next to the nose with black melted chocolate and a super fine tip on my decorating bag. Let's transform our orange dress crispy trees into a jack-o'-lantern with triangle eyes, a nose, and mouth with some cutouts for a classic jack-o'-lantern grin. If you would like to give Jack a glow, dab a thin layer of edible adhesive inside the outlines with a brush and sprinkle gold coarse sanding sugar right over it so our jack-o'-lantern can light up a whole room. This sanding sugar is from Wilton. It actually smells like maple. Who knew a glowing jack-o'-lantern could be so sweet? Now all the Halloween treats are complete. To put them into the basket, place as much floral foam as you can fit as a filler. If you wish to stand the pretzel sticks up, place plastic bags in any empty spaces to stand them up. I hope you guys enjoyed coming to Dollar Tree with me to make some budget-friendly Halloween treats and you give this basket to one of your friends as a spooky gift. These easy ideas are also inspiration for your small business or a Halloween baby shower. Look around the store to save money and get the most profit for all your hard work. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next spooky video.